Hi there. I have just recently become aware of this whole genre of YouTube video called the potato reveal video in which people harvest their potatoes on camera. But anyway, I became fascinated by this genre just because I've been binge watching Torp Tomatin's channel and her potato reveal videos are fascinating because not only is she harvesting you know her potatoes and seeing how much yield she got she's also harvesting specifically a lot of the time TPS seedlings and so she's not just revealing the yield she's revealing that variety for the first time so I have a bunch of harvestable TPS seedlings in this row here and so I thought I would do my first potato reveal video now this row of seedlings if you look at the the stake it says OBF Sarpo Miramix 17 so this is bulk seed that I collected from open pollinated seed berries from the TPS seedling lot that I grew out last year of Sarpo Miramix which was a mix of seed that was Sarpo Mira as a mother plant crossed with bulk pollen from my friend Nathan who is a fellow potato enthusiast um, I don't know if I see a Colorado potato beetle which I really haven't had much trouble with them and there is a great deal of variability like I was talking in a previous video about TPS there's a great deal of variability in here as to maturity so you can see this plant here is still fairly green and has a potato exposed and then here right next to it we see a potato that has completely dried down so, so those are the ones I'm going to be revealing and we'll be leaving these guys for later in the season so okay so it's not as easy to set up the shot as it is with the container potatoes but we'll see what we can do all right here we go Okay, looks like we got a jumbo. So this red potato belongs with this seedling here. See the stolen? Very long stolens. I'm looking at this is the potato in question, I believe. These guys belong over here with this guy. So I'm going to try. So that early seedling, not a lot of yield. Early seedling, not a lot of yield. These other two, you know, are still growing strong. So I'm going to try and rebury these tubers without severing the connections. Yeah, but I did in that case. There you go. That's not much. Nothing worth writing home about. This one looks like it was at one time a bigger plant. So we might get a little bit better. There's a... There's something. I was saying in the other video, the TPS, what to expect from TPS seedling video, it had been really wet, and then on Monday this week, Hurricane Florence came through, the remnants of Hurricane Florence, and gave us another 
four and a quarter inches. Had a bunch of flash flooding. It's interesting. So these guys are interesting. Are they? That's a different potato. Once again, nothing much to write home about. So, these, I think you can see, have kind of a I get this, I'm getting this phenotype a lot from these guys. They're kind of like buff skin. And then on the rose end, there's like kind of pink. With splotches around the eyes. Well, see, now we're getting confused. That is a black tuber. Is that coming from over here? It is. So this one next door is a blue black. Still alive. I don't want to dig it. So you're seeing nothing much yet has had much in the way of yield. That's, yield is all over the place with TPS seedlings. That's just the way it is. So based on kind of my spacing pattern there, probably Oh, well, here's a plant. Like, boom, boom. There ought to be a plant here. But let me let me dig this one first. This one looks a little more promising. There's at least one big potato right on the surface here. Let me turn it so you can see. So this potato is on the surface in green. not attacked by voles. That's not too bad. That's better than what we've had so far. And these look more like a sarpomira, I think, at least in terms of the skin color. Here's another potato, white skinned, that I'm gonna try and not dig. I think 
that's all for that plant. So right next to there, there ought to be a, there ought to have been a plant. I can't even see the remnants of a, a plant, but let me just give it a quick dig. There might be a microtuber or whatever, and then the plant just failed to thrive, which happens a lot with, okay. So there's something. Couple of couple of tubers. So is that gonna be plant number five? Because there's also a plant. There's also a plant right here. So I'm just gonna quick see what these look like if they are likely to match. That kind of looks pretty similar. So I think this is plant, this guy here, these are kind of lumpy with that pink splotchiness that I'm seeing a lot out of these See, there's kind of a really, a lot of times the smaller tubers have a more, on um, this phenotype, you know, you see kind of like the white or the, the no color around the eye with the buff underskin and then the pink surrounding it on the rose end. And that's a really common phenotype in this batch of, I speared that one, damn it. this batch of seed lot. Okay, so here's plant six. I just rolled two out of the ground on the surface and see greened up. And they have that same phenotype, you know, a little bit paler pink. These are a much rounder, smoother skinned potato. They're kind of pretty. Um, it's sitting right here. I don't, this is probably gonna be another light yielder. I think these guys, see Nathan, I was talking to Nathan about, you know, yields on these things and um, growing them and uh, comparing yields from year to year. And he was saying my yields were seeming higher than his for seedling plants and then he was asking me how close I planted them and these guys I think are from number five because you can see that lumpy shape whereas these just look very clean and egg shaped these are a really pretty potato but I mean they didn't yield for crap but look at the nice clean smooth blemish least blemishless these are more lumpy. Um, but so he, and I was saying I plant, you know, about a foot apart. And he was like, I plant much closer than that. But it's like, I can't keep them up. You know, the plants grow together even at a foot. So I don't know how he does it. So obviously digging TPS potatoes is a little messier because you've got this jumble of plants at different maturities, right? So I'm kind of trying not to crush the vines on other stuff. So. But it's also kind of exciting. So more of that phenotype there, pink and white splotch. These are pretty, pretty good.
pink and white splotch. That's it. Okay, so here we have unruliness because this is a live branch of probably this plant here with this magenta tuber. And I'm trying to dig up this guy here who is clearly going to be one of these pink and white splotches. So I'm going to probably end up digging some of these really attractive bright magenta tubers from this guy over here. So I'll just probably bury those for right now. Um, look, that's called chain tuberization right there. See how this is a stole this is a long stolen that came out of the ground and then there's a stolen there side tuber then there's a tuber right on the thing and then the stolen keeps going, it's gonna produce another tuber there. Not a common behavior in modern potatoes, but very common in, you know, very common in the stuff that I grow. So. so see, we got this whole jumbled mix of pink potatoes and the potatoes from the seed that I'm trying to harvest here. So that guy's probably going to give me an enormous yield when we get all done with it. But I'm not harvesting that one today, if I can avoid it. But I would like to get my here from this plant <laughs> ah. so if this kind of chaos doesn't appeal to you then probably you should grow your TPS seedlings in containers like Torp does because you'll have much more control over where they end up and how they so I'm just gonna fudge all these guys back into the ground you can see I just this is tubers from an addition you know from way over here not even underneath the, uh, the plant per se so I'm just gonna rebury all those guys hopefully They'll be fine. Oops. They'll be fine. We'll dig them up later. When this plant dies down Still busy setting tubers. So, here's these guys. More pink splotchy. Low yield. But then right next to it, we got Mr. Red Round and Crazy, who's going to give us enormous yields, I think, when we get to harvesting it. I just stepped on a potato berry. I heard it pop. That might make some people cry. By the time you're growing this many seedlings, 
I have so many potato berries, so much TPS that I cannot weep. So it looks like I got another pink seedling over here. And this guy is a white seedling over here. So what do these guys look like? Just so I can try and identify what I'm dealing with here. Or are there any potatoes at all? This might be a blank. It's certainly got enough stems that it... See, I just found a potato on a very long stolen. It's like a necklace of potatoes. So, still more. This is another one of those crazies. I don't think Sarpo does this, even though, I mean, I've never grown Sarpo. I don't even know how Nathan got his hands on it. Okay, here's one. Pink splotchy, of course. Pink splotchy seems to be equivalent with early low yielding. That one I harvested first pretty much blew these out of the water. Pink splotchy, one potato. Pink splotchy, one potato. So that's not even going to justify its own bag. I'm not even going to try. That one just gets to go uh, feed somebody out in the pasture. It's not even worth putting one tiny. That was a whole lot of vine that died down for a whole lot of nothing. So here's another one. This one's still alive. So we'll leave that. We'll leave that. Okay, next. No, no next. That's it. That is it. So, because right over here is my next variety. Um, so, we will be harvesting no more Sarpo Mira mixes. And uh, I have to say, let's go. Let's go look at the weights, but I don't think there's going to be anything to write to be worth even uh, keeping them, okay? Okay, so this is not the most scientific scale, but it's the one I typically use. This is number one, which is 13 ounces. 0.36 kilograms. Number two is almost six and a half ounces, 0.17 kilograms. Number three, which is 11 and a half ounces, 0.33 kilograms. Number four is one pound, two and a half ounces, which is uh, 0.52 kilograms. Number five, this is probably the, the heaviest one. Number five is two pounds. Number five is two pounds, one ounce. And that is 0.94 kilograms. So this one was, yeah, this one was that really splotchy, lumpy one. Um, so we'll wash this up and take a look at it. But yeah, splotchy, lumpy, bumpy. Number six was 10 ounces, 0.27 kilograms, 28 kilograms. Number seven 
is one pound six and a half ounces, which is 0.64 kilograms. 640 grams, right? Um, that was number seven. Number eight is one pound two ounces, 0.51 kilograms, 510 grams. And number nine is just shy of 13 ounces, so 0.36 kilograms, 360 grams. So really only one of those 10 broke my two pound barrier. And that one is not the most beautiful potato in the world. It's a little bit of a potato only a mother could love. I mean, it does have a very pretty pink look to it. And this sort of splotchy uh, spots around the rose end. But I mean, that's a very difficult potato to use and to clean and forget about peeling it. Um, so even though it does break the two pound barrier, I don't see keeping that one, although it is interesting and I will eat them. Um, so yeah, let's just go back to the house and wash them up. And I did want to point out, I did harvest one other uh, seedling that had dried down from that seed lot. And that one actually yielded quite well. They were very, not, it was like one pound 13 ounces, I think. Um, and they were very clean shaped white and pink splotch tubers, kind of similar to the rest of these in theme. So all of these were sort of that same splotchy phenotype, except for number four, which was the second highest yielder, right? Number four was, uh, or it was up there, one pound, two and a half ounces. This guy, more reminiscent of the Sarpomira, right? With the pink skin. Um, that looks a lot like Sarpomira color, I think. All right, let's go clean a couple of these up, take a picture. Okay, so here's three of them. Uh, Here's three of them washed up. This one was the number five, which was the high yielding uh, variety of the ones we harvested today, two pounds something. This was number four, which was the only pink one of the ones that we actually harvested. And then, then this one was number seven. So you can see a little better the pink and splotchy nature where it uh, has the clarity around the eyes. And then this one has just kind of got a pink banding around it. So that phenotype was showing up over and over again in these ones we harvested and it looks like the later seedlings have a lot of just straight pinks. You can also see how prominent the lenticels are on the skins of all of these and that has a lot to do with um, how wet it's been. The last like month and a half, almost two months now, it's just been constantly raining and that that tends to make the lenticels really prominent on the potatoes. So, yeah, so that was uh, my first ever potato reveal video. And I hope folks enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. Thanks a lot.